Welcome! Today I'm super excited because I got myself some new classes here. But the main reason we are here today is to talk about the highlight component itself. So the most common thing you may be familiar with is this outline effect you can see here. But there are actually a lot of things you can do with the highlight component. It has a lot of cool different features and most of them are not that familiar. So let's dive right in and I'm going to show you how to use them. Let's start. Okay, so first of all, we start with a new mesh in order to show you all the features. Let's take this statue here. And right now it's only a simple static mesh. Let's add the component highlight to it. And if I would play now, nothing would happen because the type is set to none. And let's first talk about our post process. That's the one most of you know. So if I hover over the match, you can see it's highlighting now. And everything works out of the box. So this is good. But one thing you should keep in mind, and we also talked about this in other tutorials, is that you need the post process we created for you, the BP post process. You need to have one of these in each level in order for that effect to work. Because in there, if we open it up under the render settings, we have our post process materials. And in there is the actual material. We can have a look at it. And here you can also see the defined colors depending on the type of object you're hovering over, it changes the color. So if you hover over something draggable, it has another color than if you hover over something selectable, for example. I will show you later where to define this. Let's get back to our object and our component highlight. So the post process is very simple. No settings here. Just if you want the outline effect, you can turn it on here. If you want to um, change the actual look of the material, you can do this in this instance. So if you want to change, for example, the thickness of this effect, you can increase it here. Let's make it three. And you can immediately see the difference here. Now we have a really thick outline around our object. So this was the post process effect. You can define a sound for when the highlight starts and when it ends. So let's see. Let's do a simple sound here. And now every time the highlight starts, it's doing the sound. And you can do the same for, for unselecting the highlight ends. But I don't like the sound, so <laughs> I'm, I'm clearing it out. The timeout here, it is important if you set this to zero, basically the highlight will never time out. So you can see now it's staying highlighted all the time. With this, you can define how long you want this effect to last. So for example, if we set this to two seconds and we highlight an object. Now, if I go away, you can see it lasts for two seconds and then it stops. So here you can define the duration of the highlighting effect itself. Let's reset it. The next thing we have implemented already is the size. The size. So now if I hover over the, the mesh, you can see that it changes the size. Also works with the mouse and of course with all the laser types. And for the size, we have made a curve for you. Let's open it up. This is this curve. You can basically use any curve you want. If we open this one up, you can see at the beginning time zero, we have a value of one. So this is the actual scale of the object at the beginning. And we scale it over 0 0.5 seconds 
to the value of 1.5. So if we want to have a close, uh, a bigger mesh, we can increase this number and we can also add keys in here. So now it would go bigger, 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 and then turn back. So let's see how this is looking. Let's do it again from a little distance. So bigger. And you can really see the effect of the curve there. So this is a nice way of changing the behavior. Also, it automatically looks how long this curve is. So if we set this to two seconds and let's also modify this here. Maybe we want something like this. But now this would be really slow. But depending on the needs you would have, maybe the thing. And now you can see it really slow. It starts to grow. And the nice thing about this component is you can basically add this to every actor. If we open up the type, you can see there's a non that's basically nothing happens there. There is a custom and there is a mesh. Let's first talk about the mesh part because this is the one we started to implement but we didn't uh, had a great idea how to really finish it so we let it in there as a placeholder but you could totally go in there and for example change the mesh if you hover over it that could be a good solution for this so you would have this statue here totally new and if the user hovers over it it changes into a mesh of a broken statue or something like this so you could do some special effects in there if you want to do this let's open up our component highlight and you can see right now if the highlight is set there is this custom and there's this post process and the size the mesh right now is clear if you want to add an effect in there Let's do it with a very, very basic example. It's really, really a simple one. So let's get the owner of this component. So the actor this component is actually attached to. And let's cast to static mesh. So if the owner is a static mesh, we want to set the mesh in the static mesh component and I don't have a broken statue right now so let's choose something others something other like the measurement display and try it out oh first we of course need to set this to mesh so if I play now there would be an arrow and nothing will happen and Unreal is telling us that the object itself, the mobility is not able to be static. So you would need to set this to movable. And now if I hover over the state view, you can see that the mesh itself changes. And now I have my display here. This is really a very, very basic implementation. And this is not very useful, but you could go in there and also use this nice highlight logic macro. There you have a start highlighting and an end highlighting. So you could define if the highlight starts, let's set this mesh to the broken statue. And if the highlight ends, let's reset it to be the new statue again. So this could be something you can implement in there. But as I said, we didn't came up with a very great idea. That's why we left it blank until now. But if you want um, to use it, feel free. And if you found something that is making sense, please let us know so we can also try to implement it ourselves. The next example is the most advanced one. So let's set it. And it is 
the possibility to create your own custom effects on the hovering. And for this to work, you would need an interface. So let's go, let's select the statue here and we create a new blueprint class, make it an actor and say statue highlight test. Okay, let's close this down, select the statue and add our static mesh component. This way it's already named correctly in there. So in order for this to work, we would need this interface and to add it, let's go to the class settings. And under interfaces, you can see right now, this actor don't have any interfaces. So let's add one and we want the interface highlightable. Let's compile and save. And now if we go into our event graph, let's clear this out. And if I type event highlight, event set highlight, I now have all the logic from the highlighting. So I can use my highlight logic. Let's connect them. I don't need a color right now. I have the impact location and rotation, things like this. I also could play sounds if I want. And what do we want to do? So let's do a simple test. Let's set the material of this. At the beginning, it's the material statue white. This one here, let's make the material statue red. So let's put it in here and say, okay, if the highlighting is starting, I want to set the material of the statue to the red one. And if the highlighting ends, I want to set my material back to this one. Now let's try it out. Let's hit compile and put our actor in there. So this is our actor. I make it a big, little bigger so we can spot the difference. Once we added this interface here, we now have the function can highlight. There we can define if the object can highlight. We can do a logic in there. For example, if the quest is done, it should highlight. If not, it should not highlight. Something like this. Basically, you can create any logic in there. And this is really nice because with the basic highlighting system here, you cannot enable or disable it this way. And here you have much more flexibility. So you can really do all the logic you want in there. And for this case, let's say it, shall, it should always work. And one last thing in order for this to work is, of course, we need the component itself. So let's type highlight, component highlight, and let's set it to custom. So that way it uses this logic here and the rest is good to go. So let's compile, and save. And let's try it out. And you can see now if I hover over the mesh, you have this nice effect. And you can do basically with this approach, with the interface approach, you can do everything here. So you can do like a crazy material fade dissolve effect if the player hovers over the object or yeah, basically everything in there. So feel free to make great stuff with this. <laughs> okay. So we talked about our post processing. We talked about our mesh example, the simple one. We talked about the size and we talked about the custom. So we talked about all the types. One thing you should remember. So in order for the post process to work, 
you would need the BP Pulse process in your scene. And also remember that if you're developing for the Oculus Quest, you have turned you have most probably turned off the mobile HDR. And if you turn this off, it won't work on mobile. So this you would need another way to make this work. You could turn this on, but it's really costly. And then you can not use features like the mobile multi view or the instant stereo or things like this. So this is really not that easy. So in this, for this case, it may be better to do the, the size effect, for example, if the player hovers over it, or you could do a completely custom solution if you want to use it on the quest. The nice thing about this is this really works with everything. So it works in the non-VR pawn, it works with the mouse, it works with the laser, it works with the hands. Every time the player hovers over it, this effect appears. So this is really powerful. If you want to go in there and really understand when the color is changing of the highlighting, I opened up the laser component for this example, but it works for everything that hits an object. So I have chosen this laser component and in there I'm in the set hover state function. There, if an object is hit and it implements the component highlight and it can highlight, then it gets the color from the hover state. And the hover state is defined regarding if it's, um, if it's a component select, a component grab, uh, interface draggable. There are different hover states and these hover states are converted into colors. So depending on the hover state, you get a different color. And this color is mapped to this integers. And the result is a stencil color. And this stencil color is used in the material. So for example, we have blue 253 so let's see 253 is this blue color so i can also go in there and define another blue color or another green color if i want but i can also go in there and add my completely new colors in there i would just need to make sure that i also add them in here and also add them to the selection list and then define when this will happen. So if I have something like a quest item you created, you could do its own hover state for this. And then you could, could set this up to use your own color for all your quest items. So thank you very much for this short tutorial today. But I think this hover macro is one of the most powerful things in there. You can really do a lot of awesome stuff. I've used it in so many ways in my projects already, and I'm really excited what you came up, up with. So go in there, experiment with it, and let us know if you need any help.